Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. The 37th Psalm, rich as it is in majestic language that has brightened many a pilgrim pathway, is considered to have been written just after one of the darkest hours in David's life. The bitter persecution from his own people, led by evil King Saul, had forced him at last to flee from Gath, the city of Goliath, to Adullam. He never seemed less heroic than when he pretended insanity to avoid being slaughtered out of hand. The terror and self-degradation of the man who scrabbled on the doors and let the spittle run down his beard stands in harsh contrast to the heroic and saintly calmness shining through this beautiful psalm. And yet, the trust it expresses is just what we would expect from a stalwart believer who, looking back over the storm, sees the protecting hand of the Almighty God in his deliverance. Verses 6 through 8 read, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. There at Adullam, in the safety of his hiding place among the rocks, with a small patch of level ground where he had fought Goliath just below him in the valley, and the city of Gath from which he had just escaped away down at the mouth of the canyon, where he could hear around him the roar of lions among the rocks where Samson had found them in his day, he wrote and sang this song of trust and praise. Speaking of that rugged band of adventurous patriots who here began to gather around him, he said, Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. His recent experiences have certainly qualified him to do that, and also to teach us today. What a leader! For here, and with the 37th Psalm, this outlaw started the process of taming his wild followers into something like discipline, and even lifting them into a rudimentary worship and honor of the Israelite God, which could only lead to reverence for the nation's welfare and background. The lesson of the fear of the Lord that David taught is that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The clefts of the rock are not the only defense of God-fearing people. Around them is spread not only the sheltering hills, but the garrison and guard of heaven. To get just a tiny glimpse of the weight of having the angel of the Lord camped all around us, consider the other places where that tomb, term rather is used in the Bible. The angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham when he lifted his hand to strike the fatal blow into his son Isaac. He appeared to Gideon, calling him a mighty man of valor when he was instructed to war with the Midianites. He appeared to Manoah and his wife to describe to them how they would have Samson and how his life was to be. The angel of the Lord appeared to the Bethlehem shepherds to bring them good tidings of great joy, which should be to all men from the cradle of the Son of God. That same tremendous presence hovers over and camps around those who fear God and keep his commandments today. David called himself a poor man. Well, that was certainly true, for in the harsh wilderness fastness of Adullam, there was no chance for a man living a hunted fugitive life to raise flocks or build a home, have a family. But it was also true in terms of his ability to defend himself, for wherever he turned, Saul's javelin awaited him, whence in his salvation. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. This means he went into God's court and entered his plea like a man pleading a case. O Lord, I am persecuted not because I have done wrong, but because you sent Samuel to anoint me king. I therefore call you to record that as you are God, you must defend what you have purposed. I can't do so, really. It wasn't God's plan for David to defend himself. He meant for David to learn things he would need to know in order for him to be a good king when the time came. Well, he'll use your distresses and mine the same way. Our experience in this world is intended of God to be tools for building character. If we follow his leadings, it will be that to us. Have you talked to him today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at G-O-D-S-F-I-V-E minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.